I'm sitting in a captain's seat of a seaplane and you're about to meet the captain himself and you're about to learn all about it. Oh. Here's Steve, he just absolutely busted that landing, absolutely perfect. He's coming into dock right here at the restaurant at Cottage Point. That's so cool. Just like parking a boat. I've never been in a seaplane before. First time experience. This is gonna be exciting. Come on in. It's so comfortable. Plenty of leg room as well. Since the wings are above you, you get perfect views of the whole flight. Steve, there's just so much room in here. How many can you hold in here? Well, it's got uh, seating for pilot plus uh, seven passengers. With a full load of people in here and fuel, how long could you actually fly for? Oh, probably uh, close to two hours. Steve, I'd love to have a look <laughs> at the cockpit. Can we do that? Yes, you may. Yes. Wow, this is just absolutely amazing. I notice it's dual control. Do you actually teach people or why is it dual control? It's uh, set up for uh, training. I do endorsement training and recurrency training. There's uh, brakes uh, on both sides on the top of the rudder pedals. Everything else is uh, reachable from uh, either seat. How much does a seaplane cost to buy? Well, uh, once again, uh, there's uh, all sorts of different types of seaplanes. And uh, if you're talking specifically about uh, this uh, old girl, this aeroplane in its current condition is probably worth uh, in excess of a million Australian dollars. Oh, but you can buy a uh, moderate, brand new, small recreational seaplanes for way, way less. So on a typical day with good weather, how many flights would you actually do? Well, it's uh, all uh, based on uh, the um, demand and uh, the time of the year, but it's not uncommon to fly 15 or 16, even up to 20 odd flights wow, in a day. A and that's in summer when the days are long. So once you've landed and you're coming into dock, how are you steering? Well, the uh, rudder pedals which operate the air rudder yeah. are also connected through a cable system to the water rudders which are at the back of each of the floats. Yeah. And it steers a little bit uh, like a, uh, a kayak. So uh, oh. that's uh, how you do it. But you also use inputs from things like ailerons and flaps and everything else to uh, manage power, manage speed and uh, come up with a, a good um, slow and a predictable approach. So are you allowed to land anywhere that has a water body or is there certain places where you're not allowed to land? You couldn't just land in a uh, water storage area uh, yeah. unless it was an emergency or something. But uh, in the big picture, uh, if there's a body of water which is suitable and the conditions are suitable, you can pretty much go wherever you like so long as it uh, works within the uh, framework of, uh, of the regulations. So what additional controls do you have in here that would be on a normal setup aeroplane? Well, uh, to um, allow you to steer the aircraft on the water, you uh, use the uh, water rudders which are uh, at the back of the floats and uh, they can only be uh, used uh, at low speed. So in other words, if you're taking off and landing, the water rudders need to be retracted or out of the water. And this yeah. lever here is the retraction and extension lever for the water rudders. So to get the flaps down at the back of the wings, you just adjust the uh, position of the selector lever like so, and you can see out there, you can see the oh, yeah. flaps coming down. I imagine one day going around Australia and camping in the back and parking wherever you like. Is that realistic or no? Well, yes, it's uh, very realistic. Uh, there's no reason why in a machine like this you couldn't do that. The aeroplane, uh, if it's not full of passengers, has uh, got lots of room. You can disassemble the seats and you can sleep in the back and uh, carry... Uh, a push bike or uh, or an e-scooter or if you trust the battery yeah. and uh, you could uh, have a hell of a good time. How many litres does this plane hold and what's the cruise speed of it? Sure. Well, the uh, with full tanks, it holds 513 litres and in raw figures, it burns about 105 litres per hour. So you get nearly five hours oh. of flying out of it with full tanks. Normal cruise speed is around about 95 knots. What type of motor do you have in this? Well, the, uh, the engine is the original um, design for the aeroplane, which is a uh, Pratt & Whitney R985 nine-cylinder supercharged radial, which, oh, wow. devel which develops 450 horsepower at takeoff yeah. and uh, was uh, designed in the very early 20s. And uh, it's uh, approaching 100 years uh, since it was first uh, designed. If I already had my pilot's license, and I wanted to fly seaplanes, how many landings do I have to do to fly this plane? Well, uh, in essence, the uh, 
requirement for uh, training is uh, very much up to um, the aptitude of the student. So there's no uh, definite quantities of water landings uh, or land landings that are required, except to say that it's competency based. If you want to book a flight with Steve, make sure you go check him out on his website and call him by that phone number. He can show you all around Sydney or customize a tour just for you. Thanks for watching. Check this video out right here and I'll see you in the next one. Be snappy out.